Uh, welcome to Football Brownie. Hope you're well, keeping safe, keeping each other safe and spreading the love during this pandemic because we all need a little bit of loving. Before I go any further down the bottom, please check, like, share, subscribe to the Football with Brownie YouTube channel. Football with Brownie on Facebook. My Twitter handle is there. There you go. See it coming across the bottom of the screen. And uh, my Instagram will be will be on show very soon. There you go. Uh, okay, guys, it's a great pleasure to have once again uh, former professional footballer. Uh, former, he started off at Leeds, then don't tell people about Swansea, uh, then uh, Wimbledon, Wimbledon, Man City, Man City, Chelsea, Chelsea, Everton, Everton, Fulham, and uh, then after Fulham, made his way around uh, traveling the world. <laughs> so, hmm. um, it's Terry Feeling, many thanks, Terry, and and let's not forget an Irish, uh, an Irish god. For that '94 mm. World Cup, Terry, welcome. Mm. Thank you very much thank for you. Uh, for coming on. No, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, yeah, just uh, in India at this present time. I know everybody's reading a lot about India, and uh, that we're in a little bit of a, uh, a sticky situation over there. But I'm sure, like you said, we just got to keep going. We've got to keep moving. We've got to be strong. We've got to be resilient. You know, we've got to still keep doing the things what we've been asked to do, like wearing your mask, cleaning your hands, social distancing. And I think sometimes people think uh, and forget about that, no matter where you're at in the world. You know, this this uh, virus is still about, we're still playing havoc with, you know, many and many countries. So, you know, folks, if you are listening to this, uh, just, just be safe and take heed because we're not out of it yet. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. No matter what, uh, what, what, no matter what your feelings on it, you know, we've still got a uh, share of love uh, for your fellow human beings, really. Um, Terry, now I can. Oh, right. First thing I could uh, notice was uh, your Mancunian accent. So what? I show for it. It was you. You grew up was that? Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, obviously, uh, my mother moved over from Ireland at a very young age. Uh, her and her sisters and uncles, obviously, from a place in Ireland called Tubbercurry over there in Sligo, the west coast of Ireland. Uh, okay. Beautiful place, beautiful place for the golf and, you know, beautiful sceneries just on the Atlantic coast there. So, fantastic place. But obviously, you know, when you're young like that, you want to... Uh, test yourself and see the, the bigger lights of the city so she ended up moving to london and then uh found her way up into manchester and into the irish communities in manchester really okay. uh okay. and and ended up ended up settling in 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 salford with uh sisters and brothers uh and yeah that's how you know uh i was brought into the world of uh Salford and Manchester in the north of England, the, the, the sunny part of the world, as they would say. <laughs> so, um, you know, how did you go through like schoolboy level, I suppose? And, you know, for many of the younger generations, I suppose, they didn't realise this rivalry between Manchester and Leeds for a number of reasons. Um, what was the kind of reaction from your mates when, uh, when you ended up being on Leeds' youth, uh, uh, youth box? Well, I mean, I'm not being funny. When I was, uh, you know, 11, 12 years of age, I had a lot of, a whole lot of clubs uh, chasing me. Uh, teams like, obviously, Manchester United, there was Everton, there was little teams like Oldham and, and, and Coventry and Birmingham. Uh, uh, there was the Southern clubs, uh, you know, Tottenham Hotspurs was, was, was in there. And then you had your local clubs around there. Manchester City was a big one. It was in for me at 12 years of age. Uh, you know, but a lot of them was playing in the uh, the old first division then, and you know Leeds was getting the, the the players was getting a little bit older, and we you know we talked on many occasions, and I decided it it was best to leave home, you know, and, and go and challenge myself, leave home, uh, and sign for Leeds and and see what I could do there, and you know, uh, yeah, I just uh, signed schoolboy forms, and then you know I used to travel up. Uh, for weekend games, for the uh, okay. Northern Intermediate Games, so youth team games, when I was like, you know, uh, 15 years of age, you know, 14, 15 years of age. And, uh, you know, I got thrown into the reserve side that just 
around about, I remember playing against Wolves and I must have been around about 15, 15 and a half years of age, Jeez. playing at Molyneux, yeah, and uh, I remember Eddie Gray saying, you know, wee man, uh, are you ready? Can you go on there and just run up and down? And I did, and I remember big George Berry playing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Big centre yeah, half, George Berry, yeah. yeah, playing for uh, for for Wolves. And that, that was my introduction into the life of, uh, you know, playing against hard and, you know, tough international uh, players at such a young yeah. age, you know, and, there, you know... Quite you, a sorry, 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 go on. You know, it's, uh, you know, it just, it, it just, it just challenges you. It challenges you to, you know, you've got to be on your guard. You've got to be the best you can. And we're, we're still learning then, you know, and it was, you know, we're throwing, it, we're throwing you in the deep end, you know, swim or drown kind of thing. But, but enjoy it. And, 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 and that's what it's all about. Yeah, no, I, I, apologies for uh, interrupting me. Um, there was quite a few, if I remember correctly, coming through that Eddie Gray youth system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, were you in like the same kind of age group, like um, as like the like the guy speed and so on? Or, or no, no, they, like, they obviously. No, Gary Speed was a lot, a long time, be, you know, uh, after me. You know, we had people like Dennis Irwin, Scott Sellers, uh, right, yeah. Neil Aspin, uh, obviously, a little Tommy Wright who plays centre forward. He played for a, a few clubs, a little Tommy Wright. Yeah. John, John Sheridan was there. My, uh, oh, yes, you know, that, Irish yeah. teammate, John Sheridan, Sheffield Wednesday and Oldham. Uh, he was there. there uh, you know, there was a few, a few there. Uh, Peter Swan, big Peter Swan, yeah, big centre yeah. back, centre centre half. You know, he was coming through. Uh, obviously, we, we mentioned uh, Dennis Irwin. So there was there was yeah. a few of us coming through. You know, there was a real he had a real nucleus of good young players coming through, and he was building that. You know, and he was building on it. You know, and we you know we had a great great youth set up, a great reserve side. Uh, and he was never, he was Eddie was never afraid to, you know, throw you in there. Obviously, it was Alan Clark who signed me as a as a young boy, yeah. uh, and it was Eddie Gray who, obviously, Eddie Gray who gave me the chance to uh, play in the first team. But you know, I've got to, I've, I've got to thank people like Keith Mincher and Peter Gumby uh, for allowing that to happen and all for for nurturing me right from the youth team right to the first team. So um, from there. Uh, and you made uh, 19 appearances, I think, for uh, uh, Leeds first team. Then you went to, uh, as a Cardiff fan, our local rival Swansea. Only played a year there, but it was, a, mm. it was you kind of like found your feet of, uh, you know, a good base to go from, uh, you know, for the rest of your career, I suppose. Well, it was one of these, wasn't it? It was like, you know, you get released at uh, 19 years of age, you know, your, your world's thrown upside down a little bit, you know, you're still finding your feet at 19 years of age, you know, even though, you know, uh, breaking into the first team, I think breaking into the first team gave me a, a great chance because, you know, it just wasn't about the uh, the youth team and the, the reserves, at least break, playing in the first team and, and playing cup games, 20-odd games and all, and playing in the first team, uh, it gives you that chance for other teams to see it. And I remember obviously getting released of another Leeds legend, Billy Brenner, obviously, yeah. uh, you know, for untold reasons. Uh, he, did, he didn't fancy me. He didn't fancy me as a left winger or a, a left back. He thought I was too small. Uh, but I just didn't understand that one, to tell you the truth, when he was one of the greatest footballers ever to grace Ellen yeah. Road. And he was, you know, he was a lot smaller than what I was, you know, and he played when when... You know when it was a, a tough old game, so you know. But bygones be bygones. You know, I just, I just said right then. Uh, and then, <laughs> to be fair, another ex Leeds United player, Terry Yorif, and yes. uh, ex ex Man City uh, uh, player Tommy Hutchison said, "Listen, look what you're doing." I said, "Well, I'm just stuck at home, twiggling my fingers." Uh, talked to a few people. He said, "Listen, you love come down to Swansea." You're back away from home. You'll love it. You'll enjoy it. You know, you'll be able to come home at weekends. We usually travel up at weekends. You'll enjoy the lads. It's a great place. Come and help me. I need a left back. And I says, OK, okay then I'll come down and I'll come down. And do you know what? It was probably one of the best times of my life playing football down in Swansea. I love the people. I love the fans. And it was, for me, going there, it was about showing people that what I, what I could do. 
And yeah, you know, you know, at the at the end of the day, the the Swansea fans. You know, was umming and ahhing. You know, who who was this fella? But obviously, they knew I'd played for Leeds anyway. And it, yeah. you know, going from the the old second division down to the fourth division, it's a big drop. You know, and you, oh, you, it's a big it's, it's a big drop. But I remember the fetch field very fondly, bombing up and down there, and Tommy Hutchison, Colin Pasco, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Gary Emmanuel, and you know, Mike Hughes. You know, plenty of plenty of wonderful players down there and uh, I ended up just playing out my skin for I think I played about 45 games of uh, yeah. not too right. I, think, yeah. I think I was suspended for one game uh, but I, I you know what and I didn't want to leave I come back after pre-season I had two weeks of pre-season and Terry you have said listen uh, Terry I've got something to tell you he says I says what he says we want you to sign a new contract Two years. I said, "Oh, brilliant!" So uh, I signed a new two-year contract, and I thought, "This is this is fantastic." I was ready to buy a place down there and really settle down there. Really enjoyed yeah. it, and I thought, "This is the place for me." And then two weeks later, after signing the contract, he, he come in. He said, "Teddy, listen, we've had an offer from you from Wimbledon. Uh, it's from a manager called Bobby Gould. Bobby Gould, I think, was at Bristol City, uh, Bristol Rovers. He tried to sign me at Bristol Rovers. Ah, he, got, he, he got to move to uh, Wimbledon with Don Howe. And he says, listen, we're going to sell you for, uh, I think it was around about £90,000, £100,000. Uh, do you want to go? I said, Wimbledon? Wimbledon? I said, I'm not going to play tennis, am I? I'm not, you know, I'm not going to play against... Uh, you know, I'm not going to go down there and play tennis. He says, no, do you have got football team? He said, well, Terry, I've never heard of it, Gafford, honestly. He said, and he shook. You know, we, we didn't have, we didn't have, you know, what we've got now. And, you know, you could just look it up. So, you know, I just took his word for it. He looked after me. The Swansea looked after me. It was absolutely brilliant. And uh, I do hope to go back there one day just to say thank you uh, to the fans. Because I've never, I've never gone back, to tell you the truth. And it's, it's an I awful long time. So, yeah, so it was great. Ended up signing for Wimbledon then. I know, I know. Well, I tell you what, you can go back to Swansea. As a Cardiff fan, I don't think I want to go back to that place <laughs> for ages. Uh, uh, but no, no it's, it's, good, it's good to hear. And uh, as I say, I was going through the, uh, you know, through your career. And there's so many links between, you know, yourself and individual, uh, and Wales, really. You know, the likes of uh, Bobby Gould, ex-Wales manager, Terry Yorif, obviously, as well, and Swansea, mm. and mm. Uh, and also uh, two players where Eric Young and Vinnie Jones, where your next stage mm. in your career goes, because you were five years at Wimbledon, and the first year, you know, um, first year was one of the biggest cup uh, upsets in the history mm. of the FA Cup, which was the 88 uh, final against Liverpool, where uh, mm. Wimbledon won one nil. So yeah, surely it was. Sam, I mean, how did Sam a man, former Cardiff owner, how did he convince you that Wimbledon was the place to go? Well, when you sat in, when you sat in a, uh, when I when I arrived there, you know, I just sat in a porter cabin for two hours, and nobody come to see me. I'm thinking, oh well, I've I've, I've arrived, but no one's come to see me, and I, I I'd never been there before. And he arrived, jumped out of the taxi. The taxi said, yeah, you're here at Plough Lane. You know, you just go down there and you'll you'll get to the office. I'm looking around for the office. And, uh, I think it was the secretary then uh, calls me and he says, Are you Terry, Terry Field? I said, yeah. He said, oh, just come in here. And it was porter cabins. I said, sorry. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I, I think coming from Leeds, coming to uh, obviously Swansea, the Vetch Field and Ellen Road, and then going to Plough Lane uh, and going, in, going into these porter cabins, I thought, oh, well. Yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, at Wimbledon, he said, yeah, the, the manager will be in five, ten minutes. I think I waited about two hours in there, you know, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> and I'm twiggling my fingers. I had my bags with me like you do. And obviously, it, 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 listen, and, you know, history was made, you know, and he had some wonderful players there and wonderful, you know, uh, a group of lads who was like family. And uh, Bobby Gould come. He brought it down and said, listen, you'll enjoy it. It was, a, it was the hardest six months of my life in football. I just couldn't okay. sell. I didn't know what was going on. The lads was just as crazy as they could be. And I'm thinking, <laughs> it's, there's two ways this can go. I'd rather join it or I don't. And, you know, 
I love football and I was always made to be a football player. And I says, listen, I've got to join this crazy lot. And I just joined it, got in with it. And I remember I played against Newcastle. And I thought, I was having a bit of a torrid time for six months. You know, I just really couldn't settle. And I said to myself, nah, I'm not having this. I've got to build that courage up again, get that courage back and show them what I can do. And I played against Newcastle on Plough Lane and I never looked back from that day. And then the boys got me in the dressing room, in the dressing room and says, welcome to the family. Because they knew I had something in me. Everybody yeah. else knew I had something in me. Don Howe, uh, Bobby Gould knew it was there. It was just getting it out because I was a quiet lad. I was very quiet. You know, I wasn't as crazy as them. And, and you know, then they started adding a few other lads like Terry Gibson, who was like, come from Manchester United and Coventry and, you know, uh, John Scales and... And they're all the same as me. They took time to settle in, but, you know, we all clicked and, you know, obviously going on and winning that famous FA Cup in 1988 against the mighty Liverpool. Well, that was some achievement from a group yeah. of boys who was literally thrown together, trained together, ate together, played and enjoyed it. And when we was walking down the tunnel and we was, we was going out in the field, we looked across and we obviously had a bit of battle with the Liverpool uh, players. And... Uh, we just arrived and we said, look, there's two ways this can go. No, we can get hammered or we can try and win this game. But we played the way we needed to play. We wasn't fancy. Yeah. We, 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 we played to the plan. We played to the training plan, what Don Howe and Bobby Gould had set. And yes, it, it worked right down to a tee. And we, we scored well, from a set play. Was, um, was it part of a plan, uh, Don uh, Don I and uh, Bobby Gould instructing Vinnie Jones, right? You you hit Steve McMahon within the first, first two minutes of a game, and Steve McMahon went quiet for the rest of the game, and and that's quite a, well, a, an iconic foul, really. Well, uh, if, on, if, if 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 anybody in world football uh, wants to go on to uh, obviously uh, YouTube and and see that, that would never stand in this in today's game. You know, no. it's the first minute of the game and. I think, I think. Listen, we stamp. We was we was going to stamp our mark on the game. We wasn't going to get overrun. You know, we was in a game, and we had to we had to do something. And you know, Vinny being Vinny, all hearted, no nonsense, great lad. Bang, take that. Yeah. Obviously, he got a cut high. He got a cut eye. They got he wiped it, and the ref just, hey, get on with it, lad. This is what <laughs> yeah, it's about. Don't... Yeah, get on with it. This is what it's about. And that's that was the beauty. Listen, he it, it, it just went the ball. I mean, he was like 400 years too late. <laughs> but, uh, hey, hey, fair do to Steve, fair do to Steve McMahon. Steve got up straight away. No messing yeah. about. And got on with it. Dusted himself down. And, uh, I think Vinny was like, you know, if, if there's another one played like that, I'm going in again. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, with, with that goal, um, Loy Sanchez, wasn't it, on that goal? What was your kind of... Did you still have a... a, a... After that goal, did you, you focus, Mr. Still, like, tunnel vision focus? Because then shortly after then, you know, I, well, say shortly after, you know, you did have what was the first ever penalty save with the best at the save John Aldridge penalty. Uh, but... Um, after going one nil up, what was the main focus on the players? Well, listen, we always knew we was going to get a chance. It may not have been by pretty football or, you know, up, back and throughs and wonderful, integrated football. We was always going to get a chance by a set set piece. And we always we always worked on our set pieces for and against. Always worked on them. And Dennis Wise was a great deliverer of the ball. Put it into an area, somebody will put their head on it. I ended up getting the foul. Uh, I mean, you look at Vinny fouling uh, Steve McMahon, and then you look at me getting a shove and and, and just have, getting pushed off balance by Steve Nichol. We get it, we get it. Dennis Wise puts into a beautiful area. The near post, Lori Sanchez comes across, just guides it in the the back the back post. You know, uh, a pomo yeah. we call it then. But it was about being resilient, and then obviously they get a dubious penalty, which was never a penalty. Uh, Clyde Goodyear. Proper tackle, goes in there, plays it back. And obviously, Dave Besson has to stand up and be the big guy and the captain he is. All six yeah. foot six of him. Stretches that big, uh, long lurch of a body. And now, obviously, uh, saves John Aldridge's penalty. 
yeah. which I think it goes to the left of Big Dave. Uh, and obviously, right. yeah. Dave, Dave has watched the penalties. Uh, obviously, John had a little stutter, didn't he? He had a little stop. But right, Dave, yeah. didn't, Dave, Dave didn't move. Dave only moved on the, 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 the second movement of uh, John. And obviously, he saved it. And it was absolutely brilliant. We knew then that you need a little bit of luck. We got a little bit of luck with the goal and we needed a bit of luck and history's made in front of what I think it was around about 100,000 people then. Yeah. So it was yeah. fantastic at the old Wembley. And listen, you know, I've, I've done a lot of interviews and, you know, when you're on the streets of Salford and you're kicking a ball about and you're a Man City fan and there's all red supporters around you uh, and you love the football Liverpool played back in them days, but then you're at Wembley, uh, you know, 10 years later, you know, you're at Wembley. It's from being a young boy watching the first cup final in 1976, I think it was Manchester United and Southampton at Wembley, and then Manchester United and Liverpool, of being one day, uh, 10 years later, playing on the same field. So dreams yeah. do come true for all them young uh, boys and girls out there, if you're yeah, willing no, to exactly. work hard. Well, before we leave uh, uh, the Wimbledon years, um, just one player who um, I know wasn't uh, with Wimbledon for long, and uh, 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 but he was a pioneer of, of British football, let's be honest. Um, Lloyd Cunningham. Now, he was on the bench mm. the, uh, for the uh, Cup final. Uh, mm. Fortunately, he passed away a year or two later in a car crash mm. Uh, mm. In, over here in Spain. What, what was mm. he like as a person? Well, I mean, Laurie was very flamboyant. He, you know, obviously played for, obviously, you know, he played for West Brom. Uh, he played in that uh, that dream team, didn't he? Uh, the yeah. West Brom dream team, absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, they should have won a lot more with that team, to tell you the truth. It was him, Brendan, Bats, Brendan Batson, Cyril Regis, Brian Robson. I think it was Ali, Ali, Ali Brown, I think it was. And, you know, uh, Gary Owen. Uh, so they had, they had a wonderful team, didn't they? Didn't they yeah. back then? Uh, you know, he was very flamboyant. Then he he got his move to Real Madrid. I mean, and yeah. when he when he stepped on the, when he stepped on the train, he had one or two injuries. You know, uh, when he come, but he was a, he was just a lovely just a lovely fella, just to talk to and get experience off. And I remember he used to say to me, Terry, just get the ball and enjoy yourself. If I'm playing in front of you, give me the ball. You go on overlaps and I'll do I'll do the magic. And I remember him when he come training and it, you know did anybody ever see him when he used to play for Real Madrid and he used to take the, the corners with the outside of his right and left foot. Right. He used to take corners and he used to sort of like you know instead of taking them inside he used to take them the outside of his foot and that's what he was absolutely famous for. And but he was a brilliant person and he come to Wimbledon and, you know, for him to play at Wembley, he come off and played and he played in front of me and he was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, another person, another good person lost in, uh, uh, you know, yeah. uh, to a tragic, uh, tragic death. But for me, yeah. he'll always be remembered uh, as that wonderful smile, that flamboyant coming in with his, you know, his, his smart clothes on. But, you know, he had no ego or anything. He was just a great down to earth person. That's fair enough. Uh, and then uh, on to Man City, uh, start of the 92-93 season. Uh, a fee reported to be uh, two and a half million, which was uh, equaling a, a British transfer record for a defender. And uh, Man City's equaling it by a club record at the time. I wonder now, mm. Terry, hey, how much would that two and a half million be now valued nowadays? Jeez. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if it was justified. I don't know. But you know, I, I give you know any team I went and played for. I tried to give me all a hundred percent. It was about giving it back to the fans and and, and enjoying it and all because you know we want to be football players and that's what I grew up to be. I grew up to be a football player and you know I just tried to entertain with me pace and me power up and down the wings and. And then when, you know, I could have went to Barcelona offered a million and a half, Manchester United offered a million and a half, Ajax a million and a half, Tottenham a million and a half, a million and a half. Uh, I think Crystal Palace was two and a half million, uh, Glasgow Rangers, Celtic, uh, there was Everton in the mix at that time and all, uh, Liverpool, Leeds United, back to Leeds United. So, you know, there was a few bits, yeah. the price, Sam, Sam Herman. And you probably know Sam from Cardiff. Sam, the, <laughs> yeah. 
the the price was the price wasn't right for him. He wanted two and a half million, and that was it. And you know, it, it left a bit of a bad taste in me me mouth because when somebody like Barcelona comes in for you, and you're on Cruyff, and you're thinking, just let me go, please, just let me go and let me play me football. You know, a, a wonderful, you know, club. You know, traveling abroad. You know, learning a different language. But obviously, it didn't happen. And Peter Reid come in probably at the the the, the last hour. Because uh, I, I was rather go or stay, uh, and I'd done my time. I'd done five years there now, and it was time to go. You know, I was getting a little bit stale. I remember playing against Tottenham Hotspur at Sellers Park, and I just thought to myself, I didn't want to let anybody down, but I just couldn't get going. You know, and, and I knew after that ninety minutes, I, I talked to the gaffer and I talked to the players and, and some of the captain. I said, listen, it's not, you know. I need, I need to go now. I, I, I know it's time now to go, and it's. I, I don't want to let anybody down, plus myself. So, right. yeah. And then Peter Reid come in. It was brilliant. I remember my first game. I'm running out front of the kit packs. You know, I, I don't know how many thousands was it packed into that kit packs, and it was. Yeah. It was wonder. It was just a one. It was wonderful. Uh, obviously, growing up, I told you earlier on, I was a Man City fan. I had a blue shirt when I was younger. I enjoyed watching Liverpool because the way they played the game and all, and Man City had some wonderful players. Uh, but it was it was it was it was a chance now to to win to win maybe one or two trophies. And I know people may laugh, and I know people might look at this and think, but Peter Reid was building a lovely side. He was, he was right. building a side, and if he would have been given the, the extra two years, I'm sure. I mean, he was looking at people like Matt Letizia coming in, Ian Wright coming in, honestly. And yeah. this is this is this was the blueprint he showed me. He said, "Listen, Terry, you know, I met him. This is what we're going to do." He, he got Keith curling and all. Yeah. Uh, he had people like David White, Tony Colton, Niall Quinn, young lads like Gary Flitcroft coming through. Uh, Fitzroy yeah. Simpson was, was was in there, you know, and and he, he was building something, and you could see it. You could see it actually building. We was never going to be to the magnitude of Manchester United. But, no. you know, if, if he would have been given a few years, I think he would have been all right. But obviously that didn't happen. And every time I ask someone about, uh, about you, Terry, uh, obviously my, with, uh, with Swansea Connections, uh, with Swansea, your Swansea days come out. But that goal against Tottenham, mm. now, did, did you deliberately want to set off uh, a pitch invasion on Main Road? <laughs> or, or, um, because basically, you you ran from one length of it, the whole length of the pitch scored, and uh, within minutes later, then it was uh, a full on pitch invasion. <laughs> no, we won't fans. talk about we won't we won't talk about <laughs> no, the pl- know, pitch I invasion because I think I think the authorities are still uh, looking for me to start <laughs> to start a riot. So we we'll, we'll try and keep away from that for the time being. But uh, well, well, listen to tell you the truth. I mean, listen, it was a wonderful game. Uh, yeah, I remember watching especially, it live. especially especially the first half because we was winning one nil. We was cruising the game. We, like I said before, just a couple of minutes ago about Peter Reid building something. We thought it was that year for the FA Cup, and you know it's a quarter finals. You're at home, big crowd there, uh, and you think to yourself, right, we go one win, one nil up. We're cruising the game. I think the worst thing what happened to us. I think we got overconfident. We went in there at half time. Uh, I think what happened to Tottenham Spurs? They got a good rollicking. We was cruising. Maybe we should have got a good rollicking and said, look, keep it going. A good rollicking. Uh, and we come out, and, and we just we just crumbled, you know. They scored two early goals, uh, a couple of soft goals was given away. I cleared one off the line, and it was before you knew it was four two. And yeah. obviously the second goal was mine. And I just said, listen, I said to Tony Colton, listen, T, TC throw the ball out. I'm, I, I, I was pissed off. I'd had enough, and you know, I seen the chance of maybe uh, evaporating of us uh, winning the trophy that year. Uh, yeah. I picked the ball up and I just went right. I'm just having a go now. Couldn't help me on the way. My uh, old Irish mucker, Irish teammate, helped me on the way. A couple of uh, little bumps he gave, a little uh, couple of uh, NFL challenge, NFL challenges, <laughs> and uh, I ended up uh, being in the front of Mr. Walker. And you know, there's two ways it could have went. I could have missed it or or scored. And I thought I'm not. I'm, I've done all the hard work now. I'm just going to be cool, calm, and put it in the bottom of the corner. Uh, yeah. And that's what happened. And 
it was it was a wonderful feeling for myself. It was a wonderful achievement for myself because I played very well uh, for Man City that year. You know, it was brilliant. I really enjoyed the fans. I always talk about the fans because, you know, they're the ones who, who sing your name. They're the ones who are joyous. They're the ones who are sad. They're the ones who have to go through the emotions uh, week in and week out. So for me to do that and give them something to talk about and, you know, God knows how many years later it is, you know, yeah. 20 odd years later, it's still fantastic that they're still talking about that goal. Well, when was it uh, during your Man City times when uh, when uh, you had your main uh, call up to Republic of Ireland? Uh, no, 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 no. I got, no at Wimbledon, I got the call up to to Ireland at uh, Wimbledon, and it was a funny call up really because I'd come through the youth team, I played in the youth team, played in the uh, the youth U twenty ones, I played in the B team, but could never break into the uh, national side. Uh, and don't forget, I'd been playing in the old first division since you know, 80, 87. Uh, yeah. and, and, and then to get your call up in 91, 92 season, it was an awful, awful long, awful long wait, or 90, 91 season, just, you know, it was an awful long wait. But, you know, I never moaned and groaned. I got on with it. But the, the phone call went like from Mor Morris Setters. Uh, Mr. Terry Phelan, this is Morris Setters from Republic of Ireland, assistant coach here. We, we want you on a plane uh, on Monday morning uh, to play for Ireland on the on the Wednesday, you were going over to play against Hungary. I put the phone down. He rung up again. Uh, he said, "Look, Terry, uh, sorry, I don't know what happened there with the phone. You know, we didn't have mobile phones like now, yeah, and, and yeah. you know all this video, video stuff." <laughs> and he <laughs> says, uh, "It's Morris Set as a uh, Jack Charlton's assistant manager for the Republic of Ireland team. You need to be on a plane in the morning. I'm giving you sending the details over to you. You know what you need to do. Write it down." Uh, I put the phone down again. So he picked it up. He rung me back. He said, "Listen, uh, young man," and I'm I'm thinking it's Vinnie Jones, Dennis Wise, yeah. John Fast, New yeah. Allen Court messing about. You know, that's what they used to do. They used to ring it up and say there was a you know a reporter from the Daily Mirror. Could you int could they interview you? And some of the lads had fall for it. But me being quite smart and and and, and listening and learning an awful lot of them, and and I never fell for it. <laughs> but but it could have backfired. Because the third time he picked it up, he says, Mr. Phelan, if you put the phone down again, you're going to never play for Ireland. This is very serious. We've got some injuries. We need you on the, uh, the plane. You're going to be playing. That's it. I never put the phone down. I listened to him. I was on the plane on that Monday morning going over to Ireland, Dublin. It was absolutely Jeez. fantastic. Uh, so far, so far, maybe a prank which could have gone wrong and a prank yeah. which, which uh, could have been right, you know. So for me, it was absolutely fantastic playing for Ireland. Uh, I come on nine and a half years, ten years playing international football. I'm, I'm, I'm coming right through the ranks and all, which was a uh, which was a wonderful achievement. Oh, definitely, definitely, and um, obviously, the '94 World Cup. Uh, mm. Republic Ireland, the only one of uh, well, home the home country. Would you say? Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. To qualify, all eyes were mm. on uh, on that Italy game, first uh, mm. first game, first group game, and uh, mm. come away one 0 Ray Houghton. Yeah, I think I think to tell you the truth, you know, uh, obviously, you know, I've got to say this, and and I've got to pay, pay tribute to Alan McLaughlin, who's just passed away, passed away, yeah. ex Southampton, Portsmouth, Swindon, and. Uh, a close friend and close buddy of mine. He grew up in Manchester and all, and his dad used to come down and watch me play for Salford Boys. And uh, only for uh, Big Al uh, up there uh, scoring that goal against uh, Northern Ireland. Dolphin would have went to the World Cup, you know, and it was made for Alan to come on against Northern Ireland because, you know, he did travel around the world and he was always on the bench, but he played, he played 42 times, Alan. He should have played a lot more games, but... You know, when you look at the midfield island had then, it was awful hard. But, you know, he never moaned. He got on. But, um, yeah, we ended up, bang, you know, uh, playing in the World Cup. On, and, 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 I, and I reiterate what I said earlier on. As a young boy growing up on the streets and you're kicking a ball around the streets and we talk about coaching hours, our coaching hours was done on the streets. You know, they yeah. was done, they was yeah. in. Uh, and then to play in the World Cup, you know, we talk about dreams again, don't we, really? And... To yeah. play in a World Cup, and my first, uh, any inkling of a World Cup uh, was in, I think it was a 1978 World Cup in Argentina. 
yeah. you know, and, and 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 we had a black and white TV then. That 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 was it, you know. I I you, I'm, you know, also, I'm one of those uh, people, Terry. You see, you were first World Cup as a as a kid. Your first World Cup will always be the, your best World Cup, um, and mine being oh, Mexico yeah. eight. Mine being Mexico eighty six, mm, uh, mm, you know, and what mm. Maldonado done then, but. You know, you mm. have been 78. I hear so much about both the 78 and the 82 World Cup as well. But nothing beats your mm. first World Cup as a kid, I think. Well, and you're watching it. Mario Kempes is there. You're watching the great Brazilian Zico. He there. Junior, Falco. Wonderful. I love, I, you know what, you call it sexy football if you like. I love football. I love yeah. playing football. You know, and that's why I struggled at Wimbledon a little bit because the style was just a little bit different. You know, I wanted to play. I wanted to be exciting. And like I said to you earlier on against Newcastle, I said, right, I've thrown the shackles off. I'm going to be exciting. I'm going to show what I can really do. And you know, all these wonderful things started coming back to me, you know, watching the 78 World Cup, watching the FA Cup finals. And, and then to play in the World Cup, I think it's everybody's dream to play in the World Cup. You know, you work ever so hard for four years with your, 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 your country to get there and, you know, and for us to get there and, and obviously meet Italy and all in the first yeah. game in the Giant Stadium in New York, it couldn't get any better. It could not get any better. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there's 100,000 people there and it was a game which I'll always remember. One, one, because we had to change our kit because we <laughs> were going to wear white. We was going to wear white and they had white on, I believe. We went into green. Two, because I changed my boots at the last minute before, uh, just as the picture, the group picture of the lineups was getting taken. And if anybody watches it, I'm not in that lineup. There's only 10 players there. Maybe we played with 10 players. I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I just had this curious feeling that I need to change my boots. I wasn't comfortable with my boots. Okay. And I changed them. I changed them at the last minute. And I'm glad I changed the matter the last minute because we went on, went on and won the game. But I wasn't in the photo. Yeah. If you look, I was never in the right, photo. Okay. So, if anybody but, looks uh, at and, that... Uh... No, I'm sorry. And, and for, for it to be held in New York must have been something special because of the you, you know, uh, history with the, the Irish communities there and the Italian communities there. The atmosphere must have been something special. Yeah, it was absolutely great. I mean, the atmosphere was absolutely fantastic, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, atmosphere was great. Irish, Italians, you know, uh, travelling from, yeah, all over the world. This was just wasn't about, uh, you know, uh, coming from New York and coming from the States. They come from all over the world. They come from every inch of the world to get a ticket for this game. And... It was absolutely, it was absolutely brilliant to tell you the truth that uh, we went on and we went in and uh, ended up winning the game one nil. Yeah, it, and then as you go through the, um, as you go through the group now, they, this hardly ever happens. I remember it happening between three teams in um, one of the Repub no between two teams sorry one of the Republic Island in the ninety World Cup where they, where all four teams in your group finished on four points. Uh, yeah. It was only goal, goal difference that separated uh, uh, everybody, really. Uh, so, the, um, so the, well, after John Aldridge kicking off with the, uh, with the fourth official, uh, that was against Mexico, uh, I remember. Uh, mm -hmm. He went on to play Holland then, let's be honest. Holland, Holland during my time were, were something special, weren't they, uh, in, in the following round? Yeah, I mean, listen, it was it was it was a great trip, you know, it, to yeah. to go on and play against some of the best uh, teams in the world. You are playing against the best teams in the world because they're at a World Cup, and no one can yeah. deny you that. But uh, listen, to get into the last sixteen of the World Cup, that was an achievement in itself. Yeah, I know. In 1990, we got to the quarterfinals, and you know, uh, 1998. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, 1988, we got to the uh, uh, the Euros uh, uh, quarters and all. It, it was absolutely fantastic. But this was a great achievement, you know. I think it was just a bridge too far. Uh, yeah. Uh, with the heat down in Orlando and that, and, and, and the way we played, and, you know, we was all action and 
you know, we was never going to give up. But it, it was wonderful at the end of the day, and we, we really enjoyed it. It was it was it was a great achievement uh, for a small country like Ireland uh, to go on and go to three three major tournaments was yeah. absolutely brilliant. And we just missed out on the nineteen uh, nineteen ninety two Euros and all. We we yeah. just missed out on that. Uh, so that would have been a great achievement. But you know you have to give something up. And we ended up going to the ninety four World Cup, which was absolutely which was be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Well, from uh, Manchester City, you then went to uh, Chelsea. Um, talk about your Chelsea years. Well, it it was a bit strange because uh, I never really wanted to leave Manchester City. I thought, well, I'll stay. Obviously, uh, there were transitions with different managers coming in and. You know, there was uh, fin- financial implications and obviously an offer had come in from Chelsea for, from Glenn Hoddle for a million. He was building a wonderful uh, team down there. Uh, yeah. I, obviously, I talked to the representatives of, of Chelsea and they told me what they was doing and what they was building and they was going to bring a lot of foreigners in and they, they named the foreigners who they wanted to bring in. And I thought, you know what, this could be ex- exciting. Uh, and yeah, I went down to Chelsea uh, I had one or two injuries, to tell you the truth. I had one or two injuries down there. I really couldn't get it going, but I, I got it. You know, I, I seemed to get in the flow. I think I played about 25, 25 games uh, the first year. The first year I was there, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I remember getting a, an Achilles injury. Then I got a, a little bit of an hamstring injury. So it was a little bit stop start for me, to tell you the truth. Uh, and and then Glenn went and left. He got the England job, and I thought. Here we go again. Every every time I go to a club, a manager seems to leave. Is it am I am I jinxed on them or what? <laughs> and you feel a little bit gutted because you see what the blueprint, what they're going to make and what they're going to do. And and obviously, uh, Glenn was great. Glenn was fantastic with me, and you know he brought me in. And I I love Chelsea. I you know like again, I said I was up and down the field. I enjoyed the fans. Obviously, they knew me from playing for Wimbledon and obviously Man City. And one of one of Minera's first games was against Man City. It was on a Tuesday night. I think it was I think it was about a month and a half later, something like that. It was on a Tuesday night. And it felt strange, you know. I was playing dark blue, playing against light blue, and it felt strange actually. I didn't I didn't particularly enjoy that game. Uh just for the psych- psychological reasons. It wasn't like I wanted to beat Man City or anything like that. I just didn't enjoy it. It was sort of like very strange for me. I should probably have not played in the game. You know, we I think we dropped the game two all or one all, but I should never have played in the game because it was it was it was kind of strange. And the fans, uh, the fans were singing my name; they were still great. And but uh, it was a fantastic time at Chelsea. You know, when you, you know, Rude Hullets, uh, uh, Jan Branco Zola's coming, Frank Lebus in there, Dennis Wise, Mark Hughes, Dennis, my old teammate from Wimbledon, uh, Mark Hughes is in there, Dan Prochescu, Di Matteo. You're thinking to yourself, wow, uh, Viali. You're thinking to yourself, I know the players was coming to the end, maybe one or two of them. But I tell you what, we had some fantastic young kids coming through. Uh, uh, Michael uh, uh, Dubry, uh, uh, Andy Myers was coming through. Johnny Spencer was there. Gavin Peacock was w- w- was there. Yeah, but you know, so we had some, we had, we had some, we had some uh, great, great lads. Uh, you know, Frank Sinclair. You know, you, you, you go through the, 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 the players they had there then. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. It was great to play down at, at Chelsea because they wanted to buy me uh, when I was obviously leaving Wimbledon. They wanted to get me across there then. Uh, I think it was Ian Porterfield then. Uh, okay, yeah. Obviously, they decided, that would have been, that decided would have been like to go to Manchester. Cascarino City. days, wouldn't it, I think, Ian Porterfield? Yeah, Andy Townsend was down there. Vinnie Jones was there. Dennis Wise was there. Dave Besant was there, yeah. Uh, and I remember, I remember Wimbledon going there, and we beat them five two, and we give them a right good hammering. And Dave was playing, Dennis was playing, Vinny was playing. Obviously, they just left Wimbledon, and we said to him, "Did you do the right things, guys, by leaving us?" And we just hammered them five two. And I think that was Ian Porterfield. It might have been one of his last games that game there because he spent a lot of money, you know, uh, on the lads. But no, it was great. Chelsea was great, didn't it? Obviously, I ended up uh, leaving there and going back up north uh, to Everton. Yeah, um, with you, because um, uh, as a youngster, with Cardiff being in like uh, the old fourth division, um, 
I, I did I did have a soft spot for Everton, uh, you know, mm. as a youngster. And um, you you played a, a lot of games that you know you you played a lot under Joe Royal at first. But unfortunately, mm. you had a you had a, a, a long term injury. And as you just mentioned, coincidentally, as you just mentioned, but while you were injured, again the managerial merry go round started again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but uh, yeah, it, it was great. You know, obviously uh, going to Everton. I, I, you know what? I'd been up to Everton. I played there on many occasions, and I, I knew the place. I knew what it was like. Uh, the fans. I knew how uh, the fans was. They just wanted players who could work hard and be exciting. I thought Andy Inscliffe got injured. Joel Ross said, "Listen, I need a full back. Terry can you come and do us a job." Uh, and I was, uh, and and I didn't want to leave Chelsea. And I remember Rudolph saying, "Terry, don't leave. We want you to stay here. You know, we want you to stay here. And you, you, you know, you're going to be in and out of the team." But you know, I didn't have an ego. But I thought to myself, I was better than the actual players who was playing left back at that time at Chelsea. Uh, and I know that's no given right. Uh, but I thought, you know, playing for Ireland at the time, uh, you know, playing some wonderful football, but. I just don't think Rude gave me the chance uh, to tell her the truth. And I thought, well, if I'm not going to get the chance, I don't want to be sitting in this stand, you know, uh, coming towards the end of my career. I wasn't like that. You know, I just wasn't yeah. going to sit there. I wanted to be playing. I was meant to play football and be a football player. You're not meant to sit in the stands, you know, yeah. and, and, and just watch games. And, you know, coming into training, one minute you're going to be told you're going to be in the squad, then you're not in the squad, then you get... I thought, no, I can't, I can't do this. So... I says, look, I went up and uh, pulled my boots on for Everton, the Toffees, and they were struggling. They was a struggling yeah. team, you know. Uh, it was it was touch and go, and I said, no, let's see if we can go up and help them. But, but the honesty of the fans and the honesty of the players around Big Duncan's, Ferguson, Gary Speed, uh, uh, you know, Gareth Fowlery was there, you know, uh, Slam Bilic come in, Dave Watson, Neville Southall, Anders Limpa, yeah. uh, Andy Kinchelskis, you know, all these wonderful players who have been there, seeing it and doing it. But, you know, I don't know if a lot of players was coming to the end of it. They didn't want to be in a dogfight, you know, and there was people who wanted to be in a dogfight. I wanted to be in a dogfight. I wanted to prove that we could get out of the situation, which we did, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the fans was absolutely brilliant. And then I got an injury uh, coming up. I think it was coming up to... Uh, I think it was round about the 98 season. I got an injury and it was a, a little cartilage injury. I thought nothing of it. Come back too early. And then it went again. Come back too early. Then something else. I got a, an Achilles injury, a, a thigh injury, then an hamstring injury. And it was stop start for 18 months. And I remember, listen, honestly, I remember going to the surgeon. He said, Terry, where would you like to be? I said, playing at Goodison Park in front of 45,000 fans. He said, well, what about sitting on a beach? I says, what do you mean? He says, well, if this keeps, you know, uh, going on, you're not, you're not going to be able to play. I says, well, you know, bollocks to that kind of thing. I'm not having that. Uh, I went back in the gym and I worked out for 18 months and uh, I ended up coming back, playing for, going on loan to Crystal Palace, having a wonderful time there and getting back in the Irish team. So it yeah. tells you if you do work hard and you are committed and you are focused, uh, you can prove people wrong, and that's what uh, I surely did on that one. Yeah, definitely. Def and and when uh, I went on to Fulham, then mm, uh, yeah, uh, what what were you times with Fulham? Because unfortunately, towards the end, um, it was quite a, to me uh, as uh, as um, uh, well, I, I think a professional in recruitment and so on. Well, twenty years in recruitment, off and on. I thought it was an unsavory incident, I'd be honest with you, Terry, of the way they let you go. It, it, it wasn't a, a human type of thing. Uh, you know, um, do you want to tell us about your days at Fulham and, and, and how well, you well, it was just, Well, it was, just, it was just that you want to play football at the end of the day. Yeah. Like I said before, you want to play football, you want to enjoy playing football. And I went there, played wonderfully well under uh, uh, Paul, Paul Bracewell. He had some wonderful players in that team, all internationals. Uh, but he, he just couldn't get he just couldn't get the lads going. I just don't think the lads was fit enough. Uh, and then obviously he, he uh, vacates the position and 
uh, Jean Tagano comes in, brings this great strength and conditioning, sports science uh, chap in, Roger, absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed it. I uh, enjoyed it under Paul, don't get me wrong. Played some wonderful football. Uh, getting back in the Ireland team, really enjoying it down there. Obviously, it was easy for me because I'd been at Chelsea, Wimbledon, yeah. Crystal Palace, so I knew what it was like. It was no yeah. different. Uh, but you want to play football. And then, you know, <clears throat> with me, I, I trained at 100%. I trained 100%. I, 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 I trained, I was played. You know, yeah. and that was it. There was no messing about. And I would pick up little injuries. And, you know, the staff would always say, you're training too hard. But for me, I'd never listen. I, I don't, I, it, I, training too hard? What do you mean training too hard? I mean, if I wasn't training, you'd be moaning. So I just used to train the hard. And, and, and I do extra work. And I remember, you know, playing ever so well. And obviously, then this rotation business come in. I think it was Rufus Brevett was injured. He had, I think, a, a cruciate ligament. Uh, and I come in and play some great football, no problem. Uh, and then I come back pre-season, all nice and fit. And I just get a little niggle. I get a little niggle for a, uh, a couple of weeks and I'm back fit. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm travelling. And listen, I'm, I'm 32, 33 years of age. Now I come to the end of my career and I want to enjoy it. And I'm yeah. travelling. And, you know, and I just, listen, there's an awful lot of lads who have travelled and they're, they're on the bench or they're sat in the stands. Uh, but I thought I was good enough to play. And that's not an ego thing. You know, I was back in the Ireland team. I was playing some wonderful football at Fulham. And it just quite didn't happen. And I know for how much hard work I put in, I, I just got overlooked. And I, I wasn't too happy about it. And I said to myself, you know, maybe it's time for me now to, you know, do other things and, and leave. And I had a chance to go to Crystal Palace. Yeah. And I remember... Uh, talking to Crystal Palace and Fulham says, yes, you can talk to Crystal Palace. No problem. Go down there, talk to them. They offered me a two-year playing career and, and two years as coaching. I thought, this is, this is great. Just what you need. And as I was yeah. just going up to the, as I was just going up to the gate to get a phone call, you have to get back to Fulham. I said, what for? Oh, they've pulled the plug on it. And obviously I was absolutely gutted uh, because I, was, I knew I was going to be playing reserve team football no matter how much I tried to talk to the manager and express my wishes that, you know, let me finish my career off playing football. If not, let me go. It didn't happen. And I, and, and I basically could just had enough then. I just says, right, you can do one or two things. I'll play in the reserves. Uh, and, and that's it. And you know what? I played in the reserves and he played me Let He played me right back. He played me, you know, right back in the reserves. And I, I went and played. And I just got fed up in the end. And I, I said, yeah. well, I'm better off just sitting at home. I know it was unprofessional, but... I said, I'm better off just sitting at home if, that, if this is the case, you know, and sitting down with the manager and saying, well, if that's the case, I'm better off sitting at home. And then, you know, he says, look, just come in, play, do your stuff, and you may get a contract at the end of the year. I said, yeah. what do you mean, may? What do you mean, may? It's rather a yes or a no. There's no may. And, you know, uh, I went into the office three, three or four weeks before, and he says, look, you're going to be playing. And, and I played, and he played me the last game of the season. And I thought that was I thought that was disrespectful, uh, uh, to tell the truth from from the manager. You know, after all the hard work I put in, and you know, I I I just get let go. I got a, a letter saying you, you're being released, which was fine. You know, and I, yeah. it, I, I I it was it left a bad taste in my mouth. You know, uh, because yeah, sometimes you're not in favour, or sometimes. But I just trained. I just trained and played. I was very quiet, trained and played. But I just wanted to play. And that was it, really. And obviously, from there, I could have went other places. I went to Sheffield United for three months. And then I ended up going over to the United States of America. Yeah, you ended up getting your passport, uh, renewed Terry, and, uh, and collect, start collecting the, um, uh, the air miles. So, America. Now, I love, I love the place, if you're honest with you. I got married over there. Uh, I, mm. I absolutely love the place. What, what, but what is the diff? Obviously, it's difference between uh, uh, living over there and, and working over there and just holidaying. So, what was that experience like? Well, I think it was more or less traveling and, 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 and challenging yourself again. I, I used to love challenging myself, and you know, and I thought to myself, well, listen, I went over there a few times on holiday, I enjoyed America, obviously, 
We went over there in 92 of Ireland, playing in the USA Cup. Uh, 96, the USA Cup, obviously. 94, the World Cup. So, I, you know, I, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed And obviously, you had the MLS and the I-League underneath it. And I thought... You know, this is this could be this could be this could be good for me. You know, get away now. Do me bit in England. I remember I could have signed for Leicester for six months and Wigan for six months before I went. But I thought, well, I don't want to be a journeyman. And if I get injured, you know, and I get injured for three, two or three months, then it, it, it's pointless. So I thought, you know, I'll go over to America. I got offered a great contract at the Charleston Battery. It was lovely. I really enjoyed it. And then. That's where I started off. Uh, we won the championship uh, in my second season, which was which was great. And it was going over about winning trophies and getting them to a place uh, where they hadn't been before. And they had a wonderful array of international players there. You know, people like Mark Watson there, uh, myself, uh, good good friends. A, a good friend of mine recently played for them, Colin Falvey, an Irish lad who I got over there playing. Uh, Dusty Udock, uh, Todd Offer. You know, some... Uh, Great players they had, you know, Canadian internationals, USA internationals, Irish internationals, Jamaican internationals. So the owner was building something. He said, listen, guys, we might not win it this year, but next year we, we need to win the championship. Uh, and we, we, you know, we kept our word to him. We went out and won it for him because we had a lot of experienced players there. And it was absolutely, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I started me coaching. Then I started me coaching within the club. And within the community, within colleges and schools, and uh, set a set a business up uh, with the goalkeeping pal of mine, Todd Offord, one on one soccer. Uh, and then I said, "Listen, you know, let let me get into my second life now and start coaching and 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 enjoy that, you know, part of it." I never miss football. Once uh, once I sort of like started getting out of it playing wise, yeah, I never really sat there and. You know, choked and missed it, and at any time I went straight into the coaching. So I always had something yeah. fulfilling my mind. Uh, is, traveling, is, is that, we travel. Sorry, sorry, go on. Sorry. Go on, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I'm just saying, is that something in which you would, um, in which you you would encourage uh, profession, other professionals now coming to the end of their career to don't have that kind of like stopgap, really. You know, because. Some we're all different. Media, well, we're, we're, we're all different. We're all different, aren't we? We're all different. We're all different human beings uh, with 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 different characteristics. Uh, yeah. My 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 mine. It just fell to me. A friend of mine says, "Listen, uh, and I tell you, uh, do you want to take a little U12 team in America?" I says, "What?" <laughs> and he went, "Yeah, Terry just helped me out for a couple of weeks." I said, "Yeah, I helped. I enjoyed it." I enjoyed the, the little bit of pressure. I enjoyed the uh, you know the the game days and, and don't forget you're on the other side of the line. So you know you have to manage different personalities and don't forget <laughs> these are only youngsters. These are only youngsters. So you have to you know manage them. And I, I enjoyed it. And then from there, you know, I went through the different uh, age groups and uh, went and coached for schools and colleges and. Now, obviously, with the business, started traveling all over America and meeting, uh, you know, uh, quality uh, coaches at colleges and really making making a name for myself in America. And then, uh, yeah, I get an offer from a, a friend of mine comes over for a trial at the Charleston Battery. Uh, Blair Schooler is a not is a Kiwi lad. He says, "Any anytime you want to come down to New Zealand, just give us a shout." And I thought, well, I've done me bit in America now. Let's head down to New Zealand, and I spent six wonderful years in New Zealand, and I played Brilliant. a bit and all. I played probably about <laughs> seven or eight times. I was about forty-two years of age. <laughs> you know, yeah, pulled my boots on, helped the team out. I, you know, we we it, it was it was more about learning. Yeah. To me, you know, more about yeah. learning about you know different communities, different cultures, learning learning about the game in a different way, looking at it in a different way. Uh, and it was fantastic, you know. It was six years, and I met some wonderful people who are still keeping contact now with. Yeah. Uh, you know, done me travelling to uh, Australia, kept me one-on-one -on -one soccer going. I set my own academy up down there for the, for you know, 140, 150 uh, uh, students. Uh, worked for uh, yeah, worked for Otago United, and then working for the federation there, Football South. 
and then you know doing a, a bit of work for New Zealand football and also it was great it, it, it was great yeah it, uh, so how come so how did you end up in India because that's where you are now so uh, well how yeah did you go from New Zealand to India well listen like you say you know when you you know when you you, you you're getting a little bit stale maybe and you're allowed you listen you're allowed to travel and you know I was never scared of a challenge and I thought oh. to myself I got I got a call and said listen Terry, you've been headhunted to come into an academy in in Goa, say uh, say to Goa as a chief mentor. I think I said, well, you know what? I'll have a think about it. And it took a year for it to happen. Uh, and I went over. I went over for two years. I fully enjoyed it. Again, it was something different. The lifestyle was beautiful in Goa. You know, you're on the beaches, palm trees. But obviously, I didn't go for that. I went for I went there to just enjoy myself and, and enjoy different culture and learn a little bit about uh, Indian football, you know, to tell you the truth. And obviously, I went there for two years uh, and, and fully enjoyed it. And then, obviously, things uh, trans... Uh, uh, so I went into a little bit of, what would I say, what would I say, transfer or would I say a little bit of transition uh and it was more about the, the the schooling so you know i ended up coming back to england getting more education uh working in academies uh wigan blackpool places like that uh getting more education going and watching more games which were starved off you know the premiership games and that talking to people and then i get another call out in 2014 uh, to come out and be the technical director for the Kerala Blasters down in Kerala, which okay. if you don't know Kerala, it's a beautiful part of the world, and they have they have a fan base down there, just in Kerala itself, and uh, you know the games were sixty to sixty five thousand. Jeez, uh, would turn up for the games, yeah, in the uh, in the ISL, which was uh, absolutely brilliant, and that was the second year of the ISL. Really enjoyed it. Technical director, run all the programs. Really enjoyed it, uh, yeah. And I've been here seven years later, and I'm in a new job now. I'm up in Bangalore, working for South United Football Club as a technical director. Been here two years, and obviously doing a lot of TV work uh, for Sony Sports. So yeah, I've yeah, been I've been doing you. a little bit. Been doing Sony Sports India now for seven years and all. So I've I've, I've been really enjoying it. I've really enjoyed the travelling. Met wonderful people from all over the world and. Hopefully, my traveling uh, still continues in the near future. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Right before we uh, before we uh, uh, finish it off, I, I tell you, I've I've asked people to ask a few questions, put a few questions to uh, to me to ask you. Um, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, uh, three questions altogether. But the first one is the most popular question, and it, and it's from uh, my Irish uh, social media friends. Who was the biggest drinker in his Irish squad? <laughs> oh well, do I need to do I need to name him? He was, <laughs> I, I can't name him. There was there, 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 there was a hell of a lot of them. I tell you, <laughs> yeah, uh, there, was a, there was a hell of a lot of them. Uh, I don't want to name names, no, but, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, because because what I'll do, I'll get loads of uh, WhatsApp messages and emails saying, <laughs> "No, I was a bigger drinker than him, and I was a bigger drinker than him, <laughs> and I was a bigger drinker than him." Uh, but listen. There was a few of them anyway, not to mention <laughs> no, well, any names, but <laughs> hey, there was a few of them. Um, who, um, what, what do you put down as you, your best period of, of, of playing? Uh, what uh, time, sorry. All, uh, the best period, all 500 and odd uh, Cup games are played. Every period oh, was a great... A good... every, Every period was a great period. You know, we have our ups and downs in life and there's always worse of people off than us. But, you know, when you want to be a football player, whether you're training, uh, like I says, as you come towards the end of your career, you want to be playing because you want to yeah. go out with a bit of a bang. Uh, but, you know, every day I trained, uh, every match I played, I tried to give 100%. And I can, I can count on uh, one hand how many bad games you had. And that's 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 not being funny, that. Uh, yeah. But I think I think... Just playing football was a beautiful feeling, and it was, it was, it was a lovely thing to be able to do. And I'm still, I'm still uh, very privileged to be in the game now. 
And uh, just last question, who was the most influential person uh, during the playing doing new playing days? Terry Phelan. <laughs> great, great answer. Great answer. Terry? No, no, listen, on that on, on that one, if I go back, uh, people like Keith Mincher, Eddie Gray, who gave me my start, Keith Mincher, uh, you know, they're the ones, Don Howe, Bobby Gould, uh, Wimbledon, you know, there's, there's, there's so many of them. I think it's them managers who come and buy you and they, they know what you're, all, you're like. But uh, uh, I think your family and all, is is you know yes. your, your 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 family in Ireland, uh, your family in different parts of the world, your friends. But I think you, you, it's all about yourself, isn't it? And you've got to right, you've got to you've got to be able to influence yourself and all, really. Terry, thank you ever so much. Uh, thank you, Paul. Yeah, um, you know, gr- growing up uh, in the eighties and nineties, watching football, uh, as you you were one you were one of my favourite. Uh, uh, favorite players, I'd be honest with you. Even though you uh, you you made your name at Swansea. <laughs> but, uh, oh, thank you very much. Anyway, thank you ever no so problem. Much, much appreciated. And, uh, good thank luck you very much. Everything in India. Thank you. Very-